I guess, are we ready to get started? I think it is four o'clock slash 7 p.m. And yeah, I think we're going to get started. So welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Marcos Molitzis. I am the founder of Daily Coast, and it is my distinct pleasure to open up the inaugural edition of the Cheers and Jeers Zoom Friday Rum and Coke. I think I got that correct. So welcome to everybody. Thanks for being here. And one of the ways that I have dealt with the heaviness of this new cycle is I focus a lot on my piano and on my, uh, on my songwriting. So uh, I am going to open up today this event by playing one of my composition. This is the piece she wanted me to open with. So I'm going to sit up here in a sec and then I will get started. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I uh, kick it over to Nita. <laughs> Am I up? <laughs> I hope so. Can't tell. Okay, I'm going to start then. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is Nita Lind, uh, Director of Community with Daily Co's. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and jumping through all the hoops of everything uh, to uh, join us. We really appreciate it. I want to thank all the panelists uh, for being so cooperative and also the musicians that we have. We've set up our program for some audience participation. Uh, first of all, there's a chat room, and if you hover over the bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see a link to open up the chat room. Feel free to write commentary. Uh, make sure that you check the little mark that is for panelists and attendees, or you'll only see one or the other. Uh, we won't be able to extract out questions, but write all the LOLs and feels that you want. We'll have three, three quick polls throughout the event. A screen will pop up with the question and places for you to answer, and Bill will announce them. So just sit back and relax till they happen. Uh, only the panelists have microphones, so the way for you to use your voice today is in the chat room. I'd like to especially thank our host of the show, Bill in Portland, Maine, and all the work he's put into this event. Bill started posting this, uh, his uh, weekday Cheers and Jeers column on, uh, in, on Daily Coast in 2003. He's developed quite a following, which is all of you here today. Please welcome to his uh, to build to his premier Zoom event, and go ahead, chat room. Hi, Bill. Hi, Nita. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing well out there, and you're staying safe and healthy. And it's good to see you. Um, welcome to the uh, Daily Coast Cheers and Jeers Rum and Social Distancing Friday Zoomapalooza. We even have a nice logo. See it? Isn't that awesome? Incredible. 
Um, I am your scraggly haired, commie, Marxist, Soros funded, live turd, gun grabbing, God hating, tax and spend, San Francisco values, loving hippie, Bill in Portland, Maine. And we welcome to this uh, 30 minutes of what I'm calling sheer pandemic monium. So thank you for joining us. And um, I want to say hi to some specific chatters that I've seen in here. I think we have about 80 to 100 people. Um, McJoan and McMom are here. Hi. Uh, Norm Jotter Zen Bassoon is here. North Country 21st. Brillig and Mike. Um, and Fog City John. So hello to all of you. You'll pardon me if I don't shake your hands, but I will give you the Vulcan salute. So welcome. Uh, every show has to have uh, a monologue. So here we go with my official monologue. Hey folks, that President Trump is really botching the coronavirus response, isn't he? Can you believe he said a month ago that it would only be 15 people and it would go down to zero really quickly? 15 people to zero. I think he's confusing coronavirus statistics with my Twitter followers. But no, seriously, how are you holding up with all the social distancing and the, uh, the isolation? I hope it's not too bad. My partner, Michael, who is Common Sense Mainer on Daily Coast, um, is here tonight. Come on over, Michael. And he's got his, he's got his feather boa. And there he is. Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Enjoy. Bye. <laughs> oh, wait. Hugs. <laughs> so we've been stuck in the apartment now for a month. And I don't want to say cabin fever has kicked in, but uh, earlier today when Michael got back from the grocery store, uh, all he brought back was fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> but seriously, that's our monologue on the Daily Coast Cheers and Jeers Social Distancing Friday Zuma Palooza. And now I believe we have the first of our polls coming up. There it is. Thank you, Faith. Here's the first question. Have you started having dreams about the pandemic yet? I clicked yes, because I have been having some dreams. I can't, they're not real specific yet, but um, I know there are some masks uh, in some of my dreams lately and uh, a little social distancing. So um, go ahead and vote and we'll check the results of that. How am I gonna see the results of the poll? I don't know how long the polling takes. So we'll give you a few seconds to do that. And by the way, I hope you brought something to drink with you. It's always good to have a libation with, uh, with Rum and Coke Friday. I'm, I am um, sporting some Bacardi Superior here. Normally I just pour it into a bucket, but I think tonight I'll be uh, just drinking it straight out of the bottle. And we have our poll results. Have you started having dreams about the pandemic yet? Yes, 36%, no, 34%, and 30% say I don't sleep anymore, and I don't blame you. So we've got two more polls coming up. Thank you for participating in that. Um, time for my first guest, um, Mark Sumner, uh, also known as Devil's Tower at uh, Daily Coast is my first guest. He's the author of 33 books, I don't know where you get the time, um, including both fiction and nonfiction. He's a past winner of Writers of the Future and has been nominated for both the Nebula and World Fantasy Awards. He's worked on political campaigns for 30 years. And currently, um, he is one of the most important writers right now at Daily Coast on the coronavirus pandemic. So, hi, Mark. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Bill. Thanks for having me not there. <laughs> Live long and prosper. Uh, first question is uh, just you know, basic. How are you and your family holding up? through all this. We're doing pretty good. I'm, I'm lucky enough that, that my mom, my son, my daughter-in-law live within about a four mile circle here. So, and we're all being very good isolated uh, um, uh, quarantine folks. So we're able to go back and forth and visit with each other. Also, I think some of the people that are on Daily Bucket for years have, might have noticed that I've got a 50 acre lake, like right there. Everybody look over your shoulders, <laughs> right over there. Yeah. And uh, so I've got a paddle boat, a kayak, a canoe, and a sailboat that uh, I can escape to when, when things get bad. 
got some things to keep you busy. Yep. Excellent. Well, um, when we look at this pandemic through through the rear view mirror, when this thing finally starts to kind of to clear out, what do you think will be the most sort of the lasting memories uh, in our sort of collective consciousness, the biggest lessons that we'll take away from this? Do you have any sort of uh, feel for that at this point? You know, I hope it's not just that lingering sense of dread that seems to decorate every day at the moment. Uh, you know, you'd like to think that, that what you'll take away from this are, are the uh, the good things, which some of it has been really those moments where you thank the medical workers and you start to realize that people mm -hmm. are really important in your life. It is one of those sort of purifying events. I think it was Marcos that showed me a quote just yesterday from, from Admiral Jim Stockdale, where he talked about being a prisoner of war and he talked about it as like one of the luckiest things that happened to him because he had been tested. He'd hmm. been tested and now he knew how he'd respond. So, so you know, in the best of all, we've all been tested. We're all in that crisis, right? So now we really, you, you have that knowledge of, of how you respond in a dilemma and, and hopefully we all come out of this kind of proud of how we handled ourselves. Yeah. Um, any ideas of, uh, sort of how this, this will shake out from sort of a societal standpoint in, in terms of like, you know, things we might do differently in, in the future. I mean, I'm hearing, uh, you know, Dr. Fauci saying things like, we may never shake hands with each other again and things like that. Um, and, and also, you know, in addition to that, just, I hate to get too political about this, but how you see, maybe see this shaking out in November. You know, there's, um... There's certainly some things, if I think if I was a guy that made, say, uh, cube farm furniture, I'd be looking for a different business because I think there's going to be a whole lot of open office space after this is over. In some ways, this is, this is kind of accelerating trends that were happening anyway. More people working from home, more online shopping, I, and I don't think those things are going to go away. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, likely... There's going to be a, a lot of uh, square footage in some of those cities, like San Francisco, where that square footage really could be used for housing. So absolutely, yeah, things really change. Um, on the political front, you know, you you could hope for really good things, like you know, maybe people look at these essential workers and realize who's essential, and start to value more the people that are doing some of those jobs. You know, the guy that uh, bags my groceries is worth more to me than any athlete on any sports team so uh, yep. hopefully we'll all remember that when we get through this on the other bad end of things you've got situations like uh, Victor Orban in Hungary who just you know passed a law that more or less made him dictator for life mm -hmm. so let's let's not go there yeah exactly uh final question and I'm going to be asking this of, of all of our guests tonight um who do you think should be Joe Biden's uh, Joe Biden's vice presidential pick, and who do you think it will be? <laughs> Any I'm, ideas? I'm leaning my camera <laughs> down. <here. laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I think there are some candidates that bring with them, uh, either they bring with them voters or they bring with them enthusiasm. So I, I think Warren and Harris both, both do that. Um, Abrams is another excellent choice. Mm -hmm. Honestly, who, who uh, uh, Biden is going to pick, I don't really have a great clue. I, I think that people keep throwing out the Klobuchar just because it seems like that sort of safe middle of the road kind of choice that Biden mm -hmm. might make. But I don't yeah. think that's what he's going to do. So I, 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 uh, I think one of the, the first three is, is going to be the choice. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us, Mark. We appreciate it. We'll keep reading you at Daily Coast. And uh, stay safe. Having me. All, right. All right. Take Talk care. You later. <laughs> All right. I oh, know. I think we're. I, I think we're. I think we're experiencing some technical difficulties here. I think. Oh no! Oh no! We're buffering. Oh no! Oh no! Buffering. <laughs> just kidding. It's just a joke. That was just me. That always cracks them up down at the Eagles Lodge. Anyhow, I think we are now up to poll number two. I think we have another poll coming up. Here it is, it's a live Daily Coast poll. Have you given up on your hair to the point where you're just letting it do whatever it wants? I know the answer to this one, yes. Take a look at these bangs. I feel like Mo from the Three Stooges. 
this is this is about uh, that's about two months worth, and I think I've probably got another two months worth that's going to be uh, on top of that. So, vote now. We'll tally our results up here. Holly Chambers, I voted no because I don't cut my hair anyway. Here we go. Forty-three percent say yes. Fifteen percent say no. And 42% say I've been doing that my entire life. Thanks again for voting. We have one more question coming up in just a bit. And it's time now for my next guest um, here on Cheers and Jeers, Daily Coast. I'm not going to get that right, am I? I'm just not going to be able to get that centered right. Cheers and Jeers, Daily Coast, Social Distancing Friday. Uh, Lauren Reichel is my next guest. Um, she is also known as the Fat Lady Sings on uh, on Daily Coast. She has been the hello. Uh, she's been the uh, director of health and human services for. I hope I pronounce this right. Rio Arriba, is that correct? I hope so. Uh, county yeah. in northern yeah, New Mexico. Upper River. Pardon? It means Upper River. Upper River, Rio Arriba County, northern uh, New Mexico, which includes uh, three Native American uh, tribal reservations. Uh, for the past 25 years, she's been the director and uh, has some uh, written some really good posts at Daily Coast lately about her experience uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? Hey, Bill. I'm doing great, sporting my new rosy fashion here. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it's it off stylish. so you can see my face now. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. I um, Hi, so how's, yes. how is the situation where you are and, and uh, what have been some of your, your challenges in uh, Rio Arriba County? Well, right now, Rio Arriba County is doing fairly well, but we are expecting our peak in mid-May. Um, so I just got part of health. Right now we have 10 cases. We're expecting 7,000 by then. Wow. So we're just ramping up. And... It's very challenging because we're so rural. Um, it, we're majority Hispanic and we do have several Native American tribes, but uh, when this first broke, what I did was I brought all of our providers together. We, we have already been responding to the opioid epidemic because for decades we were number one in heroin overdose deaths. And it, we just really got those down right before, um, right before this broke out. And so we used the same infrastructure that we've been addressing that ep that epidemic with. We just switched it over to look at COVID. And so when we had that first meeting in early March, uh, I discovered we have three federally qualified health centers. They have nine sites between them, and they did not have a single mask, um, not a single face shield, wow. not, a, not one mask between all of these clinics. So the county had a stockpile of masks from H1N1 and we gave them out to our clinics. And then that's when I put out a call for volunteers to sew masks. Uh, and so that's what we have been. We have a whole team of 3D makers. Well, there's two 3D makers with about five machines. Mm -hmm. And um, the rest are, uh, we're calling them seamsters because sewers looks like sewers when you spell it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, is this the project that that is um, that you you created called Rosie the Respirators? Yes, and we, yes, Rosie the Respirators. Where that's how we're on Facebook, and we started by sewing bandana fabrics because I was just outraged by that guidance from the CDC that doctors should just tie bandanas around their faces and nurses. That was yeah. outrageous. So, but then now we're just whatever we can get our hands on because what. plastic anywhere. Um, people are out of fabrics. The stores are. Uh, it's just hard to get materials. But fortunately, northern New Mexicans, we're living on a barter economy anyway, and they're huge hoarders. We don't live in apartments. Uh, we've got space, so everyone's got multiple sheds. One woman managed to pull 800 plastic gowns she'd sewn 20 years ago out wow. of her shed. She was going to sell them to uh, hairdressers, but then didn't like marketing. So we got those out to various healthcare providers. Excellent. Um, you recently wrote, and I want to quote this, you wrote that part of New Mexico's success in flattening the curve 
is the result of the willingness of its leaders to tell the truth and of its citizens to chip in. Now, how is um, how are the state authorities like Governor Governor Grisham doing in terms of sort of the nuts and bolts collaborating and coordinating with you? And and also, how are they doing with uh, the important component, which is just keeping your morale up and letting you know that there is eventually going to be light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I think Michelle Lujan Grisham is doing great. And we're very lucky because she appointed as the uh, infectious disease czar, uh, our own county, one of his, one of the EMS directors in the county. He's, he was with the state for many years. He's very smart. So that gives us a direct line to what's going on. Um, I think really, I really consider it more my job and the job of others like me me to keep the morale up, but uh, the governor does. She goes on the, uh, she's on face, she talks about her mother who's in a nursing home and her own family. And uh, I, I've known her for almost 25 years now. And I really, when she, she was first elected, I thought she was gonna be like Bill Richardson, who I didn't have a lot of use for, but she has been amazing. Her response to this pandemic has been incredible. She really got out in front of it. Um, she shut down the state when we had our first case and we hadn't even had a death yet. And she has just had, I, all I can say is power comes in small packages and um, she's just really been there for this state and we're so glad we have her. Excellent. And last question, I asked this of Mark, and I'm, I'm asking it of, of uh, all of our guests tonight. Um, who do you think should be Joe Biden's vice president? And who do you think will be Joe Biden's vice president? Well, I think Michelle Lujan Grisham should be uh, Joe Biden's vice president, except I would really, I, I really debated whether to say that because we'd hate to lose her here. Um, <laughs> nobody could take her place. Uh, I also love Elizabeth Warren and I love, um, uh, of them and um, I think it should be a progressive woman and who it will be I don't know I sometimes I'm afraid that he's gonna just like do what happened with uh, with Hillary Clinton and pick somebody who's safe and avuncular they might be very nice but I think we we really need a leftist or if that's a bad word, a progressive, and somebody who is energetic and people get excited about. All right, I totally agree. I'm, I'm really glad that Joe <laughs> announced right off the bat that you know it's going to be a woman. I think that's, that's great. So um, thank you for joining us, Lauren. Uh, be safe, be well. Thanks for all your hard work down there and, and your excellent writing at Daily Coast. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. It's been such an honor to be here. So thank you, everybody. Take care. All right, um, as you know, it's um, recommended that you, you do wear a mask now. More and more, more, and more states and communities are, are telling people to wear masks um, to prevent the spread of the virus. But masks obviously are in short supply in most places. So, uh, you know, what, what should you do if, if you don't have uh, an actual, you know, uh, one of those N95 masks? Well. I think I can help you. I wanna show you how you can put together a, it's a crude but effective face mask very quickly. And you can literally do this in seconds. So you, all you need are three things. Um, you need, first of all, I've taken this piece of, it's just a piece of, of black cloth. It's just a, it's just a uh, uh, rectangle that I folded in half. So that's the first thing you need. Then a couple rubber bands just a couple of rubber bands. I'm actually gonna take my headphones off for this. A um, Couple of those, and then just an ordinary stapler, right? So you just take those things, and what you wanna do is you just take your cloth, and then you put the rubber bands through the ends, and then you staple them together. And I've actually pre-made one of these, so you can actually see um, what, it, what it looks like. When you put this on, again, it's, it's, it's crude, but, but it works. So this will catch most of the particles. Obviously you can't wear this for super long times. You're gonna wanna try and track down a proper mask, but uh, this will do the trick in the pinch. 
This will do the trick in a pinch. And, and all, as a special side note, it also, for some reason, increases your Sith powers, which is, which is always very welcome. So time now to introduce my hair is just, I'm gonna have to cut this myself, folks. I'm just gonna get a chainsaw and cut it myself. Uh, our special musical guest uh, today on the Daily Coast Cheers and Jeers Social Distancing Friday Zumba Palooza is Paul Hogarth. Paul started uh, reading Daily Coast uh, back when I did, back in 2003, um, while he was volunteering on Howard Dean's campaign. And uh, Paul lives in San Francisco with his cat Tiger and a 1928 Baldwin Grand Piano. He also does music or th musical theater outside of work and can often be found singing or playing at his local piano bar. Paul is a campaign director for the Daily Coast activism team. And it's my pleasure now to turn things over to Paul for uh, a little bit of uh, the tunes. Thank you. Th thank you, Bill. And thank you for everyone. It's, it's really just always a pleasure hanging out with the Daily Coast community. Um, I also want to echo what Marcos was saying earlier, that there is absolutely no question that one of the things that has kept me sane during this entire pandemic has been the piano. Um, my grand piano takes up about half of my apartment and I've been spending a lot of time playing it and I've also been doing some informal shows on Facebook Live where I'll just maybe come up with a set list of songs for about an hour or so. I've done a lot of great, um, you know, had a lot of fun doing that. So um, uh, Nita and Bill asked me if I could uh, just do a song right now for you guys. This is one that you all know, although you may not know the prologue. and. Uh, it's one of these songs that always keeps me hopeful. When all the world is a hopeless jumble and the raindrops tumble all around, heaven opens a magic lane. When all the clouds darken up the skyway, there's a rainbow highway to be found. Leading from your window pane to a place behind the sun, just a step beyond the rain. Somewhere over the Way up high, there's a land that I've heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops, that's where you'll find me. Somewhere over the rainbow, blue birds fly. Birds fly over the rainbow, why then, oh, why can't I? If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I? Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Stay safe. Of course. Stay healthy and keep on tickling those ivories. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. All right. It's uh, time now to vote in uh, our third and final poll tonight, which uh, Faith is going to put up for us. And uh, oh, you're going to love this question. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Does Donald Trump deserve a big fat middle finger for the way he's handling this crisis? Oh, here, I'll take care of this. Let's see, yes, no. 
<laughs> we would never ban anybody here. This is Zoom. So I'm going to say yes. And we're waiting for the results. And don't forget, uh, coming up uh, as soon as we're done with this, what time is it? It's about 7.30 right now, Eastern time. Uh, after we're done with this, I'll be heading over to Daily Coast for the uh, normal hard copy edition of Cheers and Deers, uh, Rum and Social Distancing Friday. So we hope you'll come over and join us for that. The result, 0% <laughs> say no. I love that. 49% uh, yes. 51% cannot say what they're thinking right now or they will be banned. Completely understandable. Thank you for voting, folks, in, in our polls tonight. We appreciate it. And um, it's time now for my final guest um, here on Cheers and Jeers. Rum and social distancing. I'm never going to get that centered right. Dang it. Friday. Denise Oliver Velez is our, our guest. Um, she is right along. You've done so much. Um, a pioneer in the civil rights movement, uh, political activist, community organizer, uh, civil, right, uh, civil rights movement, women's rights movement participant, uh, AIDS activist, HIV AIDS ethnographic uh, uh, researcher, Young Lords Party and Black Panther Party member, broadcaster. In addition to your writing for Daily Coast, uh, at which you're a, a community fellow, uh, co-editor of Black Coast and author of what I consider must read Sunday morning uh, front page posts. Um, you're also a retired adjunct professor of anthropology and women's studies at SUNY New Paltz. So, hello. Hi, Bill. How cheers you doing? And cheers. And hi, everybody. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, how are you doing in your quarantined household there? Uh, we hope you're doing well. Well, I'm in New York, but I'm in the part of New York that everybody forgets about. I'm in the Hudson Valley. I'm in a, I live on a farm. My husband, two dogs, three cats, and chickens. <laughs> and awesome. We have, we've had quite a number of cases up here, and our problem is also that we're rural. Mm -hmm. So even though we have Woodstock, but we have a really good congressman. Antonio Delgado, he's been doing a really great job reaching out. And of course, our governor's been doing a great job too. Go Cuomo. <laughs> Excellent, glad to hear that. Um, one of the uh, most frustrating aspects that you say of, of, of this pandemic, um, which you've written about, is how uh, communities of color have been uh, affected so much more by this virus. Um, tell us a little bit about that. There is not only um, a clear disparity in infection rates, but also in the death rates. And we've seen that not only in the black community, but we're also seeing it in the Native American community mm -hmm. and in the Latino community. And I personally just recognize that we're also going through issues with the Asian American community every single Asian restaurant in my area is shut down. Wow. And none of the other places that do takeout, you know, did that. Mm -hmm. And I did some investigation locally and I talked to one of the owners and it's about the racism that they're mm -hmm. confronting, the hostility, and they're frightened. So they're all closed. Um, the whole issue with the racial disparities is that a lot of people are rejecting that and they're trying to come up with excuses and not wanting to look at systemic racism. And people go into denial or they're uncomfortable talking about it, but we have to talk about it. And there are things that ultimately we can do. Yeah, what, what are some of the things that you think need to happen in order to uh, improve this situation for for community of colors i know it's not it's not a cookie cutter thing it's not certainly not easy it's very complex but what would you recommend just uh in general first and foremost we need the data um, we need immediate collection of and release of democratic uh, demographic data and and that's one of the problems some states are collecting the data by race and ethnicity and others are not. 
And so unless you have the data, you can't begin to then say, well, this is what's happening. And if you don't have the data, then people make excuses. Oh, it's because those black people don't eat right. That's the only thing that's the problem or it's genetic. Right. And you had people um, doing false memes about black people not getting the virus. And we had to deal with that too. So, um, that's the first thing. And I think that we have to look at setting up testing and triage units in communities of color, not place someplace else that people can't even get to. Right. And don't have enough localized testing. And the third thing that is one of my biggest issues is that essential workers need to have that kind of testing and that kind of financial support. The people that we ignore all the time who pick our vegetables, who clean our buildings, who are frontline um, home care attendants, nurses, and they're essential in this country and they're usually over. And I think that they should be getting hazard pay. Absolutely, totally agree on that. Okay. Um, painting a rosy scenario for November, let's say you know Joe Biden becomes president, hooray. Um, let's say we get a Democratic Senate, and I, I'm very confident we'll keep the House. What kind of policies would you like to see um, passed into law um, that might there, help the situation? There are plenty of them. We don't even have to invent new things. There are already bills that have been put out there, but of course they haven't made it out of committee or they didn't make it through Congress. Um, so first and foremost, it's not just about Joe Biden. We have right. got to hold the House. We've got to take the Senate. And we also have to focus on state houses because we know with that maniac in power right now, it's state governments that have been saving lives. And it has not. And in some states, of course, you've got lunatics in charge in the state. So those state legislatures are so key and we can't just focus on the presidency. Yep, that is true. Um, leading to my last question here, which, which goes to the presidency, sorry about that, but I'm, I've asked everybody, but do you have any idea who, who, who you would like? Everybody, to listen, to anybody who reads me on Billy Coast knows exactly who I'm for, for VP, Kamala, Kamala uh, and Kamala. Yep. And who do I think that Joe Biden is going to pick? I don't have a crystal ball. I have no clue, but I hope it's Kamala. Okay. All right. Well, Denise, thank you for joining us. Thank we you appreciate for having it. me. And uh, we'll continue reading you on, on Daily Coast. Thanks so much. Take care. All righty. Uh, I have one more thing tonight, uh, a, a special guest, a, a furry guest. Um, I decided to have my dog Haley on, um, although she's too big to fit in my lap, but I wanted to uh, play a little contest with her. And this is called uh, Three Questions for the Dog. All right, so um, she's down here by my feet and she's a pretty smart dog. This is, this is a picture of Haley. I don't know if you can see that. She's a rescue lab from Macon, Georgia. And she's a sharp cookie. So what we're going to do is I have these three blank cards, right? I'm going to give her these and a Sharpie. It's not a Trump Sharpie. It's just a regular old Sharpie. And I'm going to ask her three questions. She's going to write down the answers. And if she gets all three correct, she's going to win a bag of Milo's Kitchen chicken meatballs for dogs. So let's see. You ready, Haley? Oh, you're a good girl. Good girl. Okay. All right. Question number one for Haley is, what is widely considered to be the first rebellion after the United States secured its independence from Great Britain? Any idea? She's writing it down. Oh, thank you. She's quick. She's quick. All right. Here's her answer. Wow. Look at that. Shay's rebellion. Shay's rebellion. Absolutely right. Good girl. All right. That's one down. Two to go. Second question is, who is the biggest dumpster fire in the Trump administration? Who is the biggest dumpster fire in the Trump administration? Any idea? Any, oh, she's writing down quickly. Any idea? Okay, thanks. Thanks, 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 thanks. Okay. Oh, good girl. 
That is exactly right, Kelly and Conway. Good dog. Good dog. That's, she's, I said she's smart. What can I say? Um, and our final question, and this is, this is a pretty easy, she should get this one quite easily. What is Einstein's theory of relativity? What is Einstein's theory of relativity? You know what it is? You do? She's writing. Oh, thank you. Here it is. E equals MC. Oh, no. She wrote cubed. It's E equals MC squared. I'm sorry, Haley. No meatballs for you. I'll give you a couple meatballs, but you'll have to try again to win the whole bag. Sorry about that. Good dog, though. Good dog. <laughs> and that's our show for tonight. Um, I want to thank Marcos and Denise and Lauren and Cara and Paul, Mark, Nita and Faith and of course all of you for joining us. Um, thank you so much. It's, it's so wonderful to see so many familiar names um, in here visiting. Um, it's, just, it's just been terrific. And <laughs> Good evening, Bill, Michael. Hey, Oh, how are you? Oh, my fancy mask here. We I'm, keep I'm missing just, each I'm, other at Network I'm Nation. I'm a surprise guest. Oh, my that, goodness. It kind of looks like we probably aren't going to get together in Denver. Maybe and, not, but, but maybe I next think we'll year. we'll be like week 20 or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Shucks. But Shucks. Bring your chainsaw over here, will you, and cut my hair <laughs> for me? I'll have to fly to Idaho and chop down some trees for you. Okay. How, how, how is everything in the McCarter household? Well, I'm feeling a little smothered. Mm -hmm. You're not alone. The quote is, I'm not going to be the one to give my mother COVID-19. <laughs> so, oh, well, here she is. <laughs> here, Joan. She won't go on because she refused to do her hair. Here we go. Uh, well, look at me. <laughs> Oh, brag, cheers. brag, brag. <laughs> well, oh, cheers. Yeah. Cheers to you, sweetie. Thank you, and all the best to you. Good to see you. It's, and we've, this is the first time we've met in person. So It is the first time. What a pleasure. You stay healthy now, okay? <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll keep all my right. foot out of dog gates. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, please. <laughs> Thank you. Please. All right. Please. That's it from here, but I'm now going to uh, throw it over to Marcos once again, and he's going to play us out. Thanks for joining us, folks, and join me over at Daily Coast for uh, Cheers and Jeers. We're going to post in a few minutes. Coast, you're sideways side again. Uh, no, I'm sideways again. All right, I'm going to try something here, and let's see if... There we go. There we go. All right. I hope everybody liked that as much. I actually liked that more than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to be honest, and that sounds worse than it does, but that was actually really, really cool. And uh, I hope we get a chance to do that again. That was amazing. So I get to play this out, right? So I'm going to play one more song. Um, this is one of my favorites that I've written. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. 